Hi, I'm Rudy Maxley. You know, in speaking generally, riverfront towns in the United States are often pretty interesting because often life in that particular state began there. And that is the case where I'm standing right now. I'm standing in a town called Stillwater, which is on the banks of the St. Croix River here in Minnesota. And Stillwater, Minnesota is considered the birthplace of Minnesota because in 1834, two Indian tribes agreed to trade some of the land here that became Stillwater to some settlers, which then beget the lumber industry. And up and down this river, they would float lumber endlessly and send it to the plants where the lumber was turned into useful stuff. And that became the birthplace of Stillwater. Now, in about, oh, about 17 years later, Minnesota was planning to become a state and they decided to favor three of the main cities, Stillwater, Minneapolis, and St. Paul, each with something special. So to Minneapolis, they gave the University of Minnesota. They decided to establish that in Minneapolis. They decided to name St. Paul the capital of the state, which it still is today. And that left Stillwater. And they gave Stillwater, they gave Stillwater a prison, <laughs> which is still here. I think Stillwater got the short order of the stick, uh, short side of the short, short stick out of that is what I mean. Um, any rate, this is a, still a charming town with turn of the century, 19th, 20th century uh, buildings that have been turned into restaurants for tourists. A lot of tchotchke shops, as you'll find in almost any river town that's picturesque. But it's considered a very nice destination for folks in the Twin Cities, St. Paul and Minneapolis, to come for an evening for dinner or to spend a romantic weekend. Uh, Jessica Lang and her husband Sam Shepard lived here. Um, and folks would folks come here to ride bikes because there's miles of bicycle paths uh, along the St. Croix River. Behind me is uh, probably the most famous one thing in Stillwater, which is a li old-fashioned lift bridge. Part of the part of the the bridge actually lifts up to let sailboats or these uh, faux paddle wheel boats that tourists take up and down the river pass under the bridge. It was built in it opened in 1931, I think. And uh, it's, it served West Minnesota and Wisconsin, which is on the other side of this river. Uh, it served a link to the two, but over the decades it fell into disrepair. And then about, oh, in the last 10 or 15 years, they decided to really fix it up. So it looks like new, but it's obviously old. No more vehicular traffic is allowed on it. I don't think it can stand the bare weight of trucks and cars, but you can walk across it, ride your bike across it, and it's really handy. So if you get tired of walking the charming streets in the old town here, you can go out for long hikes through, uh, through both Wisconsin and Minnesota. Anyway, put it on your list, Stillwater, Minnesota, as a place to visit if you're anywhere near the Twin Cities or wanna come here. It's very nice in the summer as I speak to you now. It's also a winter destination um, for cross-country skiing, etc. cetera. Uh, I don't know if the St. Croix River freezes over. I live right on the Mississippi River and it never really freezes enough for ice skating or to try to cross by foot. St. Croix's St. Croix is equally wide, but I don't know if it's as deep. I don't know if it freezes over or not. But trust me, because it's in Minnesota, there'll be a lot of winter sports here. So it's really all around a uh, nice city to visit. And, and fall is as gorgeous as it is in any city with a lot of trees and forests around it, as you can see behind me. Stillwater, Minnesota, that's the report from here. Uh, do drop in.